this video covers uh, the model that is presented in the paper by Filippa Gion, John Van Rienen, and Luigi Zingales, published in the American Economic Review in 2013, entitled Innovation and Institutional Ownership. The model is a career concern model. So career concern models have been developed in economics uh, starting from the work of uh, ben Olmström in the 80s. And uh, there are a set of models that are about uh, managerial strategies and decision by managers and CEOs. And the key idea behind this type of models is that one has to think about the strategies implemented by a managers as depending on the possibility that a strategy reveals information and generate learning about managerial talent. And how much a strategy can generate learning and affect beliefs about managerial talent can be important, can uh, essentially lead a, a manager to do something or not, and can help an understanding some type of environment in which you should expect more risk-taking for particular managers and environment in which you should expect less risk taking from managers. Okay, so this is like the key big insight from the um, career concern literature. Uh, I picked this model uh, among like a large literature on career concern uh, for two reasons. First of all, is a very elegant model and also very simple. Okay, they, they, they do a really good job in, in, in presenting in three pages the really key ingredient of a career concern model. Uh, some of the, of the extension of Holmstrom work are really very complicated. You have like 30, 40 pages of modeling. Here you reach a proposition in a couple of pages and it's really stripped down to the essential. The other thing why I like this um, version of the, of the career concern model, this particular paper, is that there is a very nice link between the model and the empirical setting. The empirical setting asks a question about how is that institutional investors uh, affect the propensity of firms to innovate. And the, the model essentially look at this trying to think how is that the environment in which the managers operate changes depending on uh, the presence of institutional investor and how is that this affect uh, innovation, uh, innovation decision by managers. So the, the link between what are the prediction of the model and what is then tested empirically is very uh, tight and very clear. So is a, a really very good example of a simple model that generates prediction that can be very easily tested in a data set in which you have, for example, information on innovation and information on whether firms have institutional investor and how much institutional investment is in there. It's also a model that can be easily extended and changed. Um, as they introduce here the presence of an institutional investor, very easily you can think about changing the model to think about other type of changes in the environment that affect the career concern, um, in, uh, the career concern uh, mechanism, and therefore generate different incentives in innovation. So in general, is a nice model that can help you think about how is the managerial decision to innovate may depend on the environment and how the environment shapes career concerns of managers. Okay, this is the um, model of the paper of Aguillon Varin and Zingales in the American Economic Review 2013. Uh, the paper is titled Innovation and Institutional Ownership. So uh, this is a very nice introduction to a career concern model. Um, linked to innovation investments. Um, in the model, there are two periods, uh, we call T uh, equal to one and two. And there is a CEO uh, that has a ability, uh, an ability parameter that uh, we indicate with, uh, uh, 
with uh, theta. Theta can have two values, it can be equal to zero or it can be equal to theta upper bar uh, with theta upper bar uh, positive. So essentially uh, the, the zero value here is gonna be a CEO with low ability and the theta upper bar value is gonna be a CEO with high ability. The standard assumption in this type of models of career concern is that theta is unknown to everybody. It's unknown to the CEO and to the market. And this is a, a standard assumption in this type of models. It's not really the common assumption made in economics. In economics, you usually have models of asymmetric information in which one party knows the, 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 uh, something more than the other. In this case, the manager doesn't know their own uh, ability, not either the market knows. And uh, we start with a situation of uh, high uncertainty and equal likelihood of the two abilities. So we start uh, with a probability that uh, the, pro the, the, the type is high, that is equal to the probability that the type is low, that is equal to half. So with half of the probability, it can be a low ability CEO. With half of the probability, it can be a high ability CEO. And there is a way to get some kind of signal about the ability that is through innovation. So innovation uh, as a cost of innovation, it is indicated in the model with capital I. And the effect of the innovation is to change essentially the revenue distribution. If innovation is successful, there is a higher probability of having higher revenue in the firm. And the probability of being successful in innovation is higher if you are a high ability CEO compared to a low ability CEO. So if we call with the Y1, the revenue by the firm managed by the CEO at uh, t equal to 1. If there is innovation, then we're going to have that this y1 is equal to 1 with probability p and 0 with probability 1 minus p if the CEO is high ability and y1 instead is going to be equal to 1 with probability alpha p and zero probability one minus alpha p if the ability of the CEO is instead low, okay? Where alpha is a parameter less than one, it means that the probability of high revenue is higher after innovation if you are a high ability CEO compared to a low ability CEO. How much higher this alpha is a proxy of essentially the differences in the skills between these two um, uh, managers. Um, another couple of assumptions, uh, the CEO can leave the industry and get an outside option, okay, that is going to be indicated with W um, lower bar is equal to theta upper bar divided by 2 minus delta. Here the idea is that uh, you go to work essentially in a different industry. In that different industry, you they don't know how much you're worth, so they pay you the average, the expected value of your ability, that is uh, theta upper bar divided by two. And there is a switching cost to move to a different industry, that is that um, delta. Now, the wage of the CEO in being in the industry and uh, generating revenue uh, Y1 with innovation investment is going to be equal to the probability that you are a high talent CEO given your revenue generated time uh, the productivity of the uh, the, the uh, high uh, type CEO. This is essentially, you're paid your expected ability, okay? And um, it's discussed um, uh, well in the, 
in the paper is a standard assumption of career concern model. If there is a fully competitive market for managers, your second period payment is equal to the expected ability that the market has conditional upon the information acquired in the first period, okay? So um, if you don't innovate in the second period, there is just no information. So you're going to get um, essentially theta upper bar divided by two. But if you do innovate, the revenue is somehow informative about your talent. And that is going to matter in uh, determining how much you're paid. Okay, to understand um, how to solve this problem, we really need to understand what is the probability that I assign to the fact that the CEO is high ability if I observe a positive revenue at the end of the first period. Um, to do this, um, we need to essentially play with the probabilities that were given in the model and base rule. And in particular, we're going to use two uh, important properties of the probability. The first is that the probability that a variable y gets a value y uh, i can be written as the sum over j of the probability that um, y as value y i given that x is equal to x j times the probability that x is equal to xj. And uh, the, other, um, the other property we're going to use is that the probability that a variable y is equal to yi given that another variable x is equal to xj is equal to the probability that y is equal to yi and x is equal to xj, okay, uh, divided by the probability that x is equal to xj. So these are two um, uh, fundamental properties of the probabilities that are there in every statistics textbook in a discussion of the base rule and Bayesian updating. So this is like what we are going to use uh, in, this, in this model. So uh, using this formula, for example, we can say that the probability that the revenue that the firms make at the end of the first period is equal to 1, right, is equal to the probability that the revenue is equal to 1, given that the CEO is high ability, times the probability that the CEO is high ability, plus the probability that y1 is equal to 1, here y1 is equal to 1, given that the CEO is low ability times the probability that the CEO is low ability, okay? This is an application essentially of this formula in our setting. Now replacing this, um, I get the following. The, the probability that the revenue is high, given that the CEO is a high probability, is high ability is P, times the probability that the CEO is high ability that is half, plus the probability that the revenue is high times the, 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 the uh, condition on the CEO of being low ability is alpha P, times the probability that the CEO is low ability that is also half, they can be written as P times 1 plus half, 1, one plus alpha divided by 2, okay? Now, uh, I'm going to use the second formula, this one here, this is more standard uh, uh, base rule, to say that the probability that um, the CEO is high ability given that I observe revenue equal to 1 in the first period, can be written as the probability that the CEO is high ability times the probability that the revenue is equal to um, 1, given that the CEO is high ability, divided by 
the probability that um, the revenue is equal to one. Okay, so this is essentially giving me um, the probability of uh, uh, the joint uh, realization, right, is equal to this times this. This is the probability of the joint realization divided by the probability of uh, the, 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 uh, the revenue being equal to one. So in our particular setting, this is equal to half, this thing here is equal to P divided by the probability of 1 equal to 1 that uh, uh, we got here to be equal to P times 1 plus alpha divided by 2. And by simplifying these things, I get rid of the 2, I get rid of the P, I get that everything is equal to 1 over 1 plus alpha. Okay? With a similar type of um, computation, I can get the probability that theta is equal to zero, given that y1 is equal to one. And I can get the probability that uh, theta is equal to theta per bar given that y1 is equal to 0, okay? So you can get all sorts of this uh, probability. The one that is more important for us is the probability that the CEO is high type if the revenue is equal to 0, that in our particular case um, is equal to 1 minus p divided by 2 minus p minus alpha p. Okay, and to get it, you do essentially the same thing by replacing, instead of computing the probability of 1 equal to 1, you compute the probability of 1, 1 equal to 0, and then uh, doing this thing uh, with the uh, probability of 1, 1 equal to 0 and the other, and the other probabilities, okay? Um, now, the idea then is that if I observe a revenue equal to 1 in the first period, I know that the probability that the CEO is high type is 1 over divided by 1 plus alpha, and the probability that the CEO is high type if I instead observe a revenue equal to 0 is 1 minus p divided by 2 minus p minus alpha p. So what does this give me? This gives me a wage for the second period for the CEO if the revenue is high, equal to theta upper bar divided by 1 plus alpha, and uh, the wage for the CEO in the second period, if the revenue in the first period is low, equal to 1 minus p divided by 2 minus p minus alpha p, theta upper bar. So the idea is that I'm paid my expected productivity. So if the revenue is high, with probability 1 over 1 plus alpha, I get, uh, I'm a, a, a type uh, theta upper bar. So that is my productivity. And with the probability that is 1 minus that one, I'm instead a low uh, type CEO and I get my productivity to zero, so this simplifies, okay? And in the case of um, low revenue, I know that I'm a high type CEO with probability one minus p divided by two minus p minus uh, alpha p, and this uh, uh, gives me a, a productivity of theta upper bar, and with the probability 1 minus this, I'm a low type CEO and my productivity is 0, so I'm paid 0 in, for, in that expectation. So this gives me the expected wage of the CEO in the, two, uh, in the two scenarios. Okay, we have seen how to compute um, the wage in the second period for the CEO in the case in which there is high revenue, and the wage for the CEO in the case in which there is low revenue. Uh, an assumption is the model is that um, what I'm going to get paid if there is low revenue in the first period 
is less than what I would get by just leaving the industry, okay? So the assumption here is that an unsuccessful CEO, a CEO that uh, generates low revenue, is going to leave the industry and getting as compensation um, W lower bar, okay? So now that we have done uh, these computations and we have this assumption, let's try to ask the question, will the CEO innovate? Will CEO innovate? Well, um, the utility that the CEO gets with no innovation is equal to theta upper bar divided by 2. So if I don't innovate, there's no information that is revealed to the market. And the market, therefore, pays me my uh, expected ability that we probability half is 0 and we probability half is theta per bar divided by 2. So my payment is going to be theta per bar divided by 2. The utility that I have if there is innovation is equal with probability y1 equal to 1, w2 of y1 equal to 1, plus with the pr probability of y1 equal to 0, w lower bar. So if I innovate and I'm successful, there is high revenue, I'm going to get the payment of the wage in the second period that I get, given that there is high revenue. But if I innovate and I'm not successful, that this happened with probability that y1 equal to 0, then I'm going to leave the industry and get the outside option. Okay, that's the, the assumption here. And uh, how can I write this down? This is equal to uh, the probability y1 equal to 1 is p times 1 plus alpha divided by 2 times theta upper bar divided by 1 plus alpha plus the probability that y1 is equal to 0, that is 2 minus p minus alpha p divided by 2 times w lower bar. Okay, this is the uh, probability we computed above of revenue equal to 1, and this is the uh, expected payment in the case of uh, revenue equal to 1. This is the probability of low revenue, and this is the payment that I get in the case of low revenue. Okay, and this, you know, it can be simplified um, to, to be written as um, P theta upper bar divided by 2 plus half times 2 minus P minus alpha P times W lower bar. Okay, now uh, there is going to be innovation if the utility that I get from innovation minus the cost that I sustain from innovation exceeds the utility that I get from no innovation. This can be rewritten as P theta per bar divided by 2 plus half times 2 minus P minus alpha P W lower bar minus capital I is greater than uh, theta upper bar divided by 2. Or if capital I is less than a threshold, and we call this threshold E wiggle, that is equal to P upper bar divided by 2 plus half times 2 minus P minus alpha P times uh, W lower bar minus theta upper bar divided by 2. Okay? This is the uh, threshold. Essentially, 
the model tells you that innovation takes place only if the investment in innovation is below a certain level. And the certain level is function of the parameters of the model. And this is already something that can help you getting some testable implication. For example, um, in, the, in the model, uh, it's assumed that P uh, is equal to 1 minus pi, where pi is the degree of competition in the market. So you can say, let's see how changing the degree of competition in the market increases or decreases the threshold and by that we can get an idea of whether we should expect more or less innovation investment everything else equal given the um given the uh um the the the, the, the a change in, in in competition okay so if i increase the level of competition you expect less or more uh, innovation okay so this is a basic kind of way to solve um, career concern models uh, and link it to some actual decision inside the firm, in this case, innovation. And if you have some theory of how to microfound things like P, alpha, or, or W, then in that case, uh, you can generate prediction for empirical uh, results by seeing how things may change, these parameters may actually be associated in the data with more or less innovation investments. Now, the model uses this framework to look at monitoring by institutional investors. And uh, let's try to see what are the prediction in that particular application of the model that we have in the paper. So we have seen that in the model, there is investment in innovation only if the cost of innovation does not exceed the threshold. And the threshold is essentially equal to the difference between the utility from innovation and the utility from not innovation. Now, the model uh, considers the case of an institutional investor. And here, the institutional investor differs from more traditional market investors by the possibility of the institutional investor to really monitor the CEO. And here, what monitoring means, it means understanding exactly the type of the CEO. So it means that the utility of the CEO is going to change because the, the institutional investor is going to reward the CEO not given the success of the innovation, but is going to reward the CEO given the type that is known by the CEO. So in other words, if as an institutional investor I know that the CEO is a high type CEO, the CEO is going to get the, expect the ability uh, wage that is theta upper bar, even if innovation generates uh, a low revenue. So, in other words, instead of having here the utility of innovation minus the utility of non-innovation, what we're going to get is a different type of utility from innovation that we're going to call utility of monitoring in the case of innovation. And uh, that uh, utility is going to be equal to half sigma, uh, uh, half theta upper bar plus half W lower bar. So the idea is that with half of the probability, I'm a high type CEO and I'm going to get paid my own, my full value that is theta upper bar that is known by the C, by the investor because the investor is an institutional investor that can know my type. And with half of the probability, I'm a low ability CEO. The um, institutional investor will know that and tell me that, and therefore I'm going to have to leave the industry and go somewhere else. So what is shown in the model, uh, that is the heart of the first proposition in the model, is that the utility that the CEO gets with monitoring, in the case of innovation, exceeds the utility from innovation in the absence of monitoring. Now, showing this is essentially the same as showing that innovation is higher with monitoring. Why? Because the innovation takes place for I that is below the threshold, 
and replacing you innovation with UM innovation increases the threshold, so makes innovation likely for a larger set of parameters if UM innovation is greater than U innovation. So by showing that UM innovation is greater than U innovation, we're essentially showing that there is more innovation with an institutional investor compared to a um, non-institutional investor. And uh, this is shown by essentially taking the difference between the utility from innovation with uh, uh, monitoring, okay, and the utility of uh, innovation without monitoring, and show that this difference is positive. So this utility here is half theta upper bar plus half W lower bar. And this utility here that we uh, got uh, before uh, was equal to uh, P theta upper bar divided by 2 plus uh, 2 minus P minus alpha P divided by 2 W lower bar. Okay? This thing here can be rewritten as 1 minus P times theta upper bar minus W lower bar divided by 2 plus alpha P divided by 2 W lower bar. Um, now, um, the, the, the idea here is now to show that uh, this thing is positive. How do you show that this thing is positive? Well, you can see that this term here is positive, and this term here is positive if theta upper bar is greater than W lower bar, and W lower bar was equal to theta upper bar divided by 2 minus sigma, so this is true. This is correct. This is theta upper bar is greater than, than W uh, lower bar, and therefore the, 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 the utility of the, from innovation with the monitoring from institutional investor is greater than the utility of innovation without monitoring, which implies that there is going to be more, more innovation. Okay? And this is essentially the proposition one, the, the, the first part of proposition one, um, that says the monitor by the institutional investor increases the manager's gain from innovating, okay? The, the model does a bit more, it microfounds this uh, monitoring um, uh, probability with some uh, link to the share of the firm's uh, profits that goes to the institutional investor, and also, uh, as I said before, uses the fact that P depends on the product market competition to provide additional uh, testable hypothesis, but uh, at the end of the day, what is important for us is to show that you can use this model that is very simple to play essentially with this formula to generate prediction of how is the changes in the environment in which the CEO operates affect the incentive to invest in innovation. So it's a, it's a, it's a nice, simple model that links um, career concern and CEO behavior to innovation investments and by using some uh, 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 kind of features of empirical environments that are associated with different values in this formula generate prediction of whether or not you should expect more or less innovation. So in the particular case of the paper, the idea is to show that empirically, the paper has an empirical component, that when there is monitoring when there is sort of institutional investor are involved in a company, you should expect more innovation compared to the case in which they are not uh, involved.